To access components that are inside the PC, you will need to remove the access panel. To remove the access panel, first slide the latch for the panel to the stenciled unlocked position. Brace the bottom of the unit on the table and firmly slide the panel forward to disengage it from the PC. Lift the panel off of the PC. The access panel has tabs on the inside edges of the panel. Let's slide into slots on the chassis. To reattach the panel, align the tabs near the open ends of their slots on the PC. Slide the panel to the rear of the unit until the rear edge of the panel is flush against the rear of the chassis. Slide the panel locking latch to the locked position. To remove the 2.5 inch hard drive, first remove the access panel. Swing the hard drive cage lever up. The hard drive will slide toward the front of the drive cage. Lift the hard drive up and out of the cage. If replacing the hard drive, detach the four Phillips number one screws on the sides of the hard drive and reserve. To install a new hard drive, install the four reserved Phillips number one shock mounted screws onto the sides of the new hard drive. Make sure the thermal pad is correctly positioned on the hard drive cage. The four side screws on the hard drive align into four slots on the hard drive cage. To replace the hard drive into the system, align the screws into their slots. Press the hard drive cage lever down while sliding the drive fully back until it is fully engaged with the hard drive cable mounted on the hard drive cage. To remove the hard drive cable, first remove the access panel and the hard drive. Press the hard drive cage latch down. Detach the two Torx 15 screws securing the hard drive cable to the cage and pull the hard drive cable away from the cage. Lift up the latch for the hard drive cable port on the motherboard to release the cable. Pull the hard drive cable out of the unit. To replace the hard drive cable, place the motherboard flat part of the cable back into its port with the blue side of the cable facing the rear of the unit. Press the latch down to secure the cable into its motherboard port. Place the hard drive cable back onto the hard drive cage and secure it to the cage with its two Torx 15 screws. To remove the hard drive cage, first remove the access panel and the hard drive. Press the hard drive cage latch down. Detach the two Torx 15 screws securing the hard drive cable to the cage and pull the hard drive cable away from the cage. Swing the hard drive cage latch back up. Detach the three long Torx 15 screws that secure the cage to the motherboard. Pull the cage out of the unit. To replace the hard drive cage, align the three screw holes on the cage over their standoffs on the motherboard. Replace the three long Torx 15 screws to secure the cage inside the unit. Press the hard drive cage latch down. Press the hard drive cable back onto the cage and secure with its two Torx 15 screws. To remove the M.2 drive if present in the unit, first remove the access panel and the hard drive. Detach the two Phillips number one screws securing the metal bracket in the center of the hard drive cage to the cage. Pull the center metal bracket off of the cage. Detach the Phillips number one screw securing the drive in place. The drive will pop up. 
pull the drive out of its motherboard socket. The M.2 SSD hard drive has a notch on its edge that aligns over a key in its motherboard socket. To replace the M.2 SSD hard drive, angle the drive into its motherboard socket at a 30 degree angle, engaging the notch over its socket key, and press the drive down. Hold it down while replacing the Phillips number no. 1 screw. The center metal bracket for the hard drive cage has a small slot on one edge that aligns over a small tab on the hard drive cage. Place the center metal bracket onto the hard drive cage, aligning the slot on the bracket over its tab. Secure the bracket to the cage with its two Phillips number no. 1 screws. To remove the heat sink plastic bracket, first remove the access panel. Pull up on the bracket and remove it from the unit. There is a peg on the heat sink plastic bracket that aligns over the top of one of the heat sink screws. To replace the heat sink plastic bracket, slide the heat sink plastic bracket into place behind the heat sink, aligning the peg over the heat sink screw. To remove the display port module, first remove the access panel, the hard drive, the hard drive cage, and the heat sink plastic bracket. Detach the two Phillips number no. 1 screws securing the module to the motherboard. Pull the module off of the motherboard and out of the unit. There is a connector on the display port module that fits into a connector on the motherboard. To replace the module, press the connector edge of the display port module onto the motherboard connector. Secure the display port module to the motherboard with its two Phillips number no. 1 screws. To remove the system fan, first remove the access panel and the heat sink plastic bracket. Disconnect the fan connector from the motherboard. Unwind the connector from the heat sink screw post and free the connector from the small metal cable guide on the side of the heatsink. Lift up the front edge of the fan and slide the fan forward slightly before removing it entirely from the unit. The system fan has two small posts on the sides of its retaining tabs that fit into slots on the side of the heatsink and the chassis. To replace the fan, align the fan posts into their slots and slide them forward until the front of the fan can be pressed down into place. Route the fan connector under its cable guide on the side of the heatsink and inside the back screw post for the heatsink. Reconnect the fan connector to the motherboard. To remove the heatsink, first remove the access panel, the heatsink plastic bracket, and the system fan. Loosen the three captured Torx 15 screws for the heatsink in the order indicated by the stencils on the heatsink. Pull the heatsink out of the unit. Before replacing the heatsink into the system, first clean off the old thermal grease from the microprocessor. Clean the grease from the heatsink as well if you are replacing the same heatsink into the unit. Make sure there are seven thermal pads affixed to the bottom of the heatsink. Apply new thermal grease or thermal pad to the microprocessor.
align the three screws of the heatsink over the three screw holes on the motherboard. Tighten the three Torx 15 screws to secure the heatsink in the system. To replace system memory, first remove the access panel. Swing up the front edge of the system fan. Next, gently pull out on the retaining lever located on each side of the SO DIMM memory module. The module will pop up from its socket. Pull the module out of the socket. There is a small notch on one side of each SO DIMM memory module that aligns over a small tab in each SO DIMM socket on the motherboard. To replace an SO DIMM memory module, angle the module to about 30 degrees, engaging the notch into its socket tab. Press the module down into place until the retaining levers snap into position over the sides of the module. Swing the system fan back down into position. To remove the thermal sensor, first remove the access panel. Pry off the foam covering the connector end of the thermal sensor. Detach the thermal sensor connector to the motherboard and pull it out of the unit. To replace the thermal sensor, reconnect the thermal sensor to the motherboard. Press the foam back around the thermal sensor onto the motherboard. To remove the CPU, first remove the access panel, the heatsink plastic bracket, the system fan, and the heatsink. Press down to release the CPU load lever from its retention tab and pull the load lever and load plate away from the socket. Identify pin 1 on the socket by the mark on the corner of the socket stencil. Line up the pin 1 corner of the Intel CPU removal replacement tool over the socket. Press down on the plunger of the removal tool to pick up the CPU from the socket and remove the tool and the CPU from the motherboard. To replace the CPU, first identify pin 1 position on the microprocessor by noting the yellow mark on the corner of the chip assembly. Make sure the Intel CPU staging tool side pins are set to the correct socket type for the CPU. For this unit, it is LGA1151. Place the CPU into the Intel CPU staging tool. When correctly inserted, the small notches on the side of the CPU should align over the side pins on the staging tool. Place the removal replacement tool over the stage, lining up the pin 1 triangles on each tool. Press down on the removal replacement tool to pick the CPU up from the stage. Align the removal replacement tool again to pin 1 on the motherboard CPU socket. Press the plunger on the removal replacement tool to release the CPU into the socket. Swing the load plate down. Lock the load lever under its retaining tab to secure the microprocessor into place. To remove the speaker, first remove the access panel. Pull up the tape covering the speaker. Detach the speaker connector to the motherboard. Detach the Phillips number one screw that secures the speaker inside the PC. Slide the speaker towards the center of the unit and pull it out of the PC. To replace the speaker, slide the speaker into its bracket on the unit, aligning the screw holes on the speaker and the bracket. Replace the Phillips number one screw to secure the speaker. Replace the speaker connector to the motherboard. Replace the tape covering the speaker. CMOS factory settings should be restored as a first step before replacing the system motherboard. 
To restore CMOS factory settings, first remove the access panel, the hard drive, and the hard drive cage. Remove the battery from the motherboard. Wait 30 seconds. Replace the battery to the motherboard. CMOS factory settings are now reset. Note that you will now need to enter system BIOS and reset the clock in BIOS after this procedure. To remove the motherboard, first remove the access panel, the hard drive, the hard drive cage, the heatsink plastic bracket, the display port module if installed in the unit, the system fan, system memory, the M.2 drive if installed in the unit, the wireless LAN board, the thermal sensor, the hard drive cable, the heatsink, and the CPU. When removing the CPU, install a socket cover on the load plate window before replacing the load plate over the socket. Detach the speaker connector from the motherboard. Detach the three Torx 15 screws that secure the motherboard to the chassis. Tip up the front edge of the motherboard and remove the motherboard from the unit, being careful of the speaker and wireless LAN antenna cables. Place the motherboard in an anti-static bag. To install a new motherboard, carefully tip the back edge connectors of the motherboard into their ports on the chassis and lay the motherboard down into place, making sure the speaker and antenna cables are not trapped under the motherboard. Secure the motherboard to the chassis with three Torx 15 screws. Replace the speaker connector to the motherboard. To remove the wireless LAN board, first remove the access panel, and the hard drive. Detach the two Phillips number no. 1 screws securing the metal bracket in the center of the hard drive cage to the cage. Pull the center metal bracket off of the cage. Carefully snap off the antenna connectors from the board. Detach the Phillips number no. 1 screws securing the board in place. The board will pop up. Remove the board. The wireless LAN board has a notch offset from the center that aligns over a key in its motherboard socket. To replace the wireless LAN board, angle the board into its motherboard socket at a 30 degree angle and press down. Hold it down while replacing the screw. Replace the antenna connectors to the board. The antenna connectors are labeled 1 and 2 and should be connected to the corresponding 1 and 2 labeled ports on the wireless LAN board. The center metal bracket for the hard drive cage has a small slot on one edge that aligns over a small tab on the hard drive cage. Place the center metal bracket onto the hard drive cage, aligning the slot on the bracket over its tab. Secure the bracket to the cage with its two Phillips No. 1 screws. To remove the wireless antennas, first remove the access panel, the hard drive, the hard drive cage, the heatsink plastic bracket, the speaker, the system fan, and the heatsink. Carefully snap off the antenna connectors from the wireless LAN board. Remove the motherboard assembly from the unit. 
Remove the front wireless antenna cable from the cable guides securing it to the bottom of the chassis. Peel off the foil tape for the front antenna on the front of the chassis and pry the front antenna off of the unit. Remove the rear antenna from its cable guides on the bottom of the chassis. Remove the rear antenna cover by squeezing on the top tab securing the cover and releasing the cover. There is a hooked tab securing the rear wireless antenna to the chassis. Press down on the tab from the inside of the chassis to release the antenna and pull the antenna cable out through its access hole at the rear of the unit. The rear antenna has a hooked tab and two small locator pins that fit over an edge and into two small holes on the unit. To replace the rear antenna, feed the antenna cable back in through its access hole, align the top pin into its hole, and press the tab and bottom pin into place. The cover for the rear antenna has a hooked tab at the top and a tab at the bottom that fit into two small slots on the rear of the unit. To replace the rear antenna cover, align the bottom tab into its slot, then press the top tab into place. Replace the rear antenna into its cable guides on the bottom of the unit. To replace the front antenna, press the antenna adhesive and foil tape into place at the front of the chassis. Feed the antenna cable to the inside of the unit through its access hole and secure it in its cable guides on the chassis. Replace the motherboard assembly into the unit. Replace the wireless antenna connectors to the wireless LAN board. The antenna connectors are labeled 1 and 2 and should be connected to the corresponding 1 and 2 labeled ports on the wireless LAN board. 